Good morning and welcome to our morning podcast Bible study. It's such a joy to be able to spend a little bit of time with you here today um, in the midst of this busy season. Now, I don't know about you, but um, people can get a little stressed out during this, what we call our busy holiday season. And, and so maybe it's you, maybe it's people around you. I don't know, but how do you deal with that? Well, that's what I want to address today as we look at, we wrap up Proverbs chapter 15. But first we need to pray and ask the Lord to bless our time together. Won't you pray with me? Father, I do thank you so very, very much for the opportunity to spend time in your word. Oh, to pause in the busyness and the pressures and the, and the demands of the day and, and all the, the different things that are happening in our, in our lives as we celebrate the birth of Christ. They, all those things that seem to get in the way of what the most important thing is, is that you gave. You gave magnificently and in such a, uh, a profound way, Lord, being born of a virgin. A king, and not just any king, but the king of kings and the Lord of lords, who would come without pompous, without threat, but as a babe. To live, to communicate the truth of love and of life, and to give his life that we might have. Forgiveness and eternal life. Thank you, Jesus, as we ask that you would bless our time in your word today. In your name we pray. Amen. So, we recognize from the last couple of weeks that chapter, Proverbs chapter 15, it's about relationships. And there's a, the, the foundation is um, verse 1, and it's, the, it's not just what we say, though it's important what we say, the words that we say, but it's more important in how we say what we say, but it's even the greatest importance is the language we use, the body language we use when we speak. Can you imagine the difference between having a conversation with someone where you are face-to-face -face and you're focused in on every word and everything that they're trying to say and you got their full attention and you're communicating really well because you're the greater listener. And, and so there's dialogue that's happening. It's so rich and healthy and fruitful and you both are exchanging that type of communication back and forth compared to if you're having, trying to have a dialogue with somebody and they don't want to have a dialogue with you. In fact, they turn away from you. So they, they, you can't even he, actually hear what's being said and you don't get to see this. But you're hearing words and, and maybe they even storm off with snippy little comments that it's like, I don't know exactly what you're saying, but what that was was not nice. You could just tell by both the body language and the tone. And so, can that change? And it can. And it's Proverbs 15.1 is the foundation of that. A soft answer turns away wrath, but it's a harsh word that stirs up anger. You see, the greatest example, as we learned last week, was the example of the softest words that were ever spoken in all of life, and those were the words of Jesus on the cross. Do you remember, it starts with forgiveness. And he, and he walks us through relationships, right? And in, in particularly with the relationship with the Father where he felt separated from the Father, just like sometimes we feel separated from God, but we're not. Every breath, every moment is under the sovereignty of God in our lives. And it comes to a place where the final thing that Jesus says is, won't you receive me? It's, it's the recognition of what takes place on that cross. I want to read part of that to you from Luke chapter 23, verse 44. 23, 44, it says, It was now about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. So the sixth hour is noon. The ninth hour is 3 p.m. So that means there was darkness over all the earth. Now, wait a minute. Figure that one out. No, there has to be light because of the way that the, the earth rotates, right? And revolves around the sun. 
We, that's how we identify a day from another day is light and darkness. But now we're saying, no, for this three-hour period of time, there's darkness surrounding the entire world. And so what's that pointing to? That points to an acknowledgement that there was a phenomenon. That's exactly right. There was a phenomenon taking place. God was paying for the, the sins of mankind because it was for man to recognize that apart from Christ, you're in darkness. And you deal with the deeds of darkness. But what happens? It says, said, And while the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two, then Jesus, calling out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Oh, that he surrenders to the Father. He gives up his life. It's not taken from him. He gives up his life. And the picture is the curtain, the Holy of Holies in the temple. There was a curtain, a 10 inch thick curtain without seam that surrounded the Ark of the Covenant, the Holy of Holies. And that temple shook in the midst of this earthquake. And the, 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 if you will, the curtain that surrounded the Holy of Holies was torn from the top to the bottom. The picture is that Christ himself was torn. His curtain, his body was torn for us to give us access then to God the Father. See, the Son provides access to the Father by the power of his Holy Spirit. So when we receive him, we receive the work of the Holy Spirit continually in our lives. He never leaves us or forsakes us, is what God's word says. But his spirit lives within us. We know that as we read in John 1.12, it says, But to all who did receive him, who believe in his name, he gave the right or the power to become children of God. That's how we become a child of God. Not all men are children of God, only those who have received him who were born, so there's a new birth, not of the blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So there's this new birth, and that's exactly what, what Jesus teaches Nicodemus that's described for us in John chapter 3. In verse 5, it says, "True." Jesus answered Nicodemus, saying, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of the water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. There's a difference, but the Spirit is born by faith in Christ when we receive him. It says this for those who have received Christ in 1 John. Now we're looking at the epistle of John at the end, almost to the end where Revelation is of the New Testament. But it's 1 John chapter 5, beginning verse 4. It says, for everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith, because our faith is in Jesus Christ. It goes on later on in that chapter, and it says, if we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is greater. So what's the testimony of God? We'll keep reading, and it says, for this is the testimony of God, that he is born concerning his Son. Whoever believes in the Son of God has this testimony in himself. Whoever does not believe God has made him a liar because he has not believed in the testimony that God has given concerning his son. And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life and this life is in his son. Whoever has the son has life and whoever does not have the son of God does not have life. You've got to have the right Jesus. You can't just make him up and say that he's the spirit brother of Lucifer or any other ridiculous thing like he's an angel or something. No, he's God who became a man to rescue man from himself, from themselves. That's who this Jesus is. And it says, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. I know that I have eternal life. I don't just hope. I know because of the confidence of who Christ is and what he did for me on that cross. You see, that takes me back then to the conclusion of Proverbs chapter 15 because it's when Christ is in me, life changes. Verse 31, the ear that listens to life-giving reproof will dwell among the, the, the wise. Best communicators are the best listeners. That's where wisdom comes from. Verse 32 says, whoever ignores instruction despises himself, but he, but he who listens to reproof gains intelligence. You see, when, when I'm listening, I gain intelligence because I'm listening also by the Spirit of God leading me, showing me what's truth and what's not. 
But if I don't, it says if I ignore that instruction of the truth of God calling me to him, longing for me to receive him and to live by the direction of his Holy Spirit, then what I do is I actually despise myself. I don't value my life as much as Christ valued my life by the way that he demonstrated it on that cross. And then finally, verse 33, the summary, the fear of the Lord is instruction in wisdom and humility comes before honor. You see, reverencing, loving respect for Jesus is the greatest wisdom that we could ever have as a man. But it can't come without humility. And humility comes before honor. You see, walking humbly in Christ leads to honor, eternal honor to live with him forever, but to live with purpose in our lives now. Won't you receive the greatest gift of all, the gift of Jesus during this holiday season? And let peace rule in your hearts. God bless you all. I look forward to seeing you next Monday.